Welcome back, everybody. Yay. I'm Jamie. I'm Justina. And this is Just, Just So, so you, know. you Know. We are talking about a trend that is taking TikTok by storm. Pissing me off. It is called the Mob Wives Aesthetic. I mean, we went from clean girls, slicked back hair, very little makeup. Right, quiet money. Very to... bland clothing to trash, basically. Sorry, I don't know where the heck that shit came from. I remember like looking up, cause sometimes I do look up, okay, what are the trends in fashion? Just, you know, to see what I could wear or what I already know I hate in my wardrobe that I could just toss away. And I saw that about to pop off and I was like, oh hell no, I know y'all are not about to bust out these ugly ass Cruella DeVille coats. So tell us just, you know, what is the mob wife trend? I'm still trying to figure it out. It, for me, it's like a fur coat, maybe cheetah print, like leggings, maybe some uh, tacos, like some red pointed toe heels, basically look like Cruella DeVille. You know, big coat, looking like a, like you exhausted, like, but also fancy. And yes, they wanna with look glasses. Like they come from money. Yeah, like their husbands don't talk to them any, any, anymore, but they have developed an attachment with cigarettes and, uh, wearing animal skins. I don't know. Yeah, and the, the, the basic trend of the mod wife, you, you kind of wear an all black outfit underneath. Sometimes it's leather, it's, it can be leggings, it can be right. just an all black outfit, and then you throw on a fur coat. Right. Now, let me just get something straight. I like patterns sometimes. I actually do like the cheetah. Yeah. I, 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 do, I don't care if somebody wants to put on heavy makeup or sunglasses yeah. or, or look like they're walking out of Versace, whatever, you do you. My yeah. problem is when animals are involved. Involved. Right. At the expense of animals, it's not cool. We can appreciate animals and like what they look like without harming them. Mm -hmm. And and like the, also what's trendy with the whole mob wives aesthetic right now is like vintage furs. And I'm like, it doesn't make it any better. You're still wearing dead animal skins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in this episode, you guys, we are going to take you on a journey through vintage fur. We're gonna talk about why it's actually not the best option mm -hmm. and what you can wear instead. And yeah. we have a very special guest coming on, Ashley Froner. She is the social media director at PETA. And I guess they think she's a mob wife. I love it. Or maybe she just knows why looking like a mob wife is not cool. She's got great style too. Right. So we can maybe take a tip from her. Oh, for sure. But before we get there, you guys might notice we're in a different setting. We're actually in LA at one of the PETA headquarters. Yay, it's so amazing here. Look at the sunlight. You may have also noticed I'm a different color. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got some sun. So I'm finally back to my real self. Island yeah. girl vibes. Island girl vibes, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, and so she was tanning out all day long. I went out in the sun for maybe 10 minutes and I got kind of a farmer's tan. <laughs> it's like my shoulder's completely white and then right here is there's a line. And then it's like my, you know, a little bit of tan from just being out there. I get burnt, man. <sighs> I'm trying to be, I guess, I uh, I'm trying to be you. I don't know what else to do. I don't know. I would say like depends on what you eat, but you're vegan. I think if you eat more healthy, your body's able to uh, take in vitamin D much easier. That's, yeah. I'm not a doctor though, so don't, don't quote me on that. Don't take medical advice don't, from this show. Please don't take medical advice from me. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it, I was very excited to hear that we're doing this episode because I think fashion is a thing where people like to express themselves yeah. through what they wear, through their makeup, and there's all these different trends mm -hmm. and social media is one way that certain trends get across. Right. So what do you know about the, the mob wife trend? I know that a lot of um, powerful influencers are really running with this trend and getting multiple fur coats. Mm -hmm. So kind of going off of what you said, my first fact is that the mob wife trend has seen remarkable growth 
of 2,122% in the last couple of months. So on TikTok, the hashtag mobwife has accumulated an impressive number of views reaching over 160 million people. And the mobwife aesthetic hashtag has been viewed 130.6 million oh times. God. Why is everybody <sighs> trying to just be, be like, like each everyone? Other? I'm sick of it. And 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 so the, these people that I guess were on TikTok followed some of these influencers. Right. I don't even want to say their names or no. give them any more intention than they deserve. Baltimore. There, there is a one girl in particular who is like known as the mob wife aesthetic CEO. She thinks she's like so cool and badass. Like we're literally glamorizing crime and we're glamorizing a life. Of, of that that wasn't so easy, you no. know, being a mob wife, dealing with a little bit of misogyny, dealing with, you know, husbands that might have abused them. It's right. like this whole weird, this whole weird trend. And so TikTok, these influencers in particular, actually helped this growth. And I have seen this. I wrote an article about this a few months back where seafood sales actually mm were on the rise because the seafood industry hired influencers to start posting about canned tuna and all these different canned seafood products. And you saw a growth, I wanna say it was upwards of 9% That's just insane. from social media posting about it. So it just goes to show the power that we have to either promote a really cruel and an unenvironmentally friendly, mm -hmm. if that's the word, yeah. um, option, versus promoting kindness and, and alternatives. If you like the look of fur, let's let's just be clear here, you could wear faux fur. Right, it's not that hard. I mean, it's just, it's crazy that these companies reach out. That's insane, I do not know that. Let's kind of get into vintage. Right. So people have this idea that if you buy something that has been used, the damage is already done, right. the animal already died, it's cruel, it's already on the shelf, so you should buy that instead of buying something new. Right, all my friends fight me on that. They're like, oh my God, Justina, yes, it's leather, but I got it from a vintage shop. Here's the problem. And I'm like, when you walk around the street in that coat, promoting that product, nobody knows that it's vintage. You right. are promoting an industry that gasses, electrocutes, and kills animals for vanity. That is what that's saying. That message that you send when you walk on the street in a vintage or not vintage fur coat, you are saying that it is okay to take animals' lives for a fashion statement. Right. Period. Exactly. So the, another fact that I have about the mob wife trend is that the an essential part of it is the attitude. <laughs> is it? Yes. Oh God. So it's like everybody's an actor these days. They're like putting their costumes on, putting on their fake moods. I'm like, be yourself. It's like, Who are you? Little Miss Sally Joe. She's like, let me just put on my my little black outfit with a large fur coat and then channel my inner mafia wife. So weird. Where the heck did that even start from? I'm like, was there? Um, I know there was a mafia movie. They just they came out last year. I think it's called Mafia Mama or something. Mm -hmm. But I know none. Nobody fucking watched that movie. I watched it. It was hilarious and incredible. But like. I guess it was the fashion industry, but I'm like, where did, why and where did that really like blow up? Yeah, we're gonna get into the history of okay, it. Okay, okay. Um, because it, it is really interesting to look at the fur industry as a whole. I mean, when you go back into even the 80s, PETA was really one of the first organizations that start, started disrupting the fur industry. Right, throwing like paint and stuff like that on people, which Mm -hmm. was pretty radical. <laughs> pretty epic, if you ask me. Pretty epic, but a lot of people started freaking out when it came to like animal activists. And they also started crashing runway shows, but mm -hmm. what this did was it sent a message right. to the public of like, this is no longer socially acceptable. Like, right. we, I think with fur especially, we, we know that it's not something that people do three times a day like eating. It's a little right. less personal. It's like, right. you don't have to wear that code and you don't have to because you think it's necessary for nutrition. You're doing it simply for vanity. So I think right. fur was one of those industries where we could get that message across mm. a little easier and it right. became socially unacceptable to the point where we wanted to make people think twice about wearing this. And I think part of social change comes with that uncomfortability. So like, 100%. if you're thinking, okay, well, if I wear this on the street, am I gonna get yelled at? Am <laughs> yeah. I gonna get called Is somebody out? gonna like throw no pain on me. Oh, absolutely. If I see you, there will be problems. Oh my God, literally Jamie will be like, is that fur? When we walk down the street, I'm like, oh Lord. But something you have done is say, you're too beautiful to be wearing fur. And I'm like, oh, that's a good tactic because it's so true. Like Jennifer Lopez, if my goodness, if Jennifer Lopez were to watch this episode, Jennifer, you are way too beautiful to promote 
dead animals on your body. Are you kidding me? I know you care. I know you have a heart. I feel like the compliment also helps to kind of throw them off. So like I, I change my approach based right. on the person and depending on how they respond, sometimes I will go off on them. And I'll you be go, like, take it back. You fur scum, how dare you're you? You're like, you're too beautiful but to be wearing fur. You. Like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> I was like, you want me to bust out the mob wife? I'll fucking bust it out yeah, right now, you're bitch. Like, Give me that Hoops are coming <laughs> out, okay? You think you're a mob wife? Yeah, you haven't met one side of me, okay? Whoa. I'm like, when it comes to defending animals, yeah, yeah. game over. Don't play with Jamie. No. She will come at you. No. Full force. And by, hopefully by the end of this episode, you guys understand our frustration from yeah. it because we are looking at an industry that takes beautiful, beautiful animals and, and turns know. them into a bag, a jacket, a, a designs for vanity for nothing more than than somebody to make themselves feel like they're rich or whatever. Yeah. The animals that are used in fur, it could be minks, it yeah. could be foxes, raccoon dogs, they even dogs. rabbits. Yeah, and and you know, depend it doesn't matter what kind of animal right. it is. It just matters that they also deserve to to have a life and to live. And when we go to some of these fur demos and fur protests, one of the chants that we say is 50 dead animals, one one fur, fur coat. coat. Think about that. That's 50 lives that have been taken for a jacket. When, you know, in 2024, guys, there are other jackets that will keep you warm. Like, yeah. I tell people sometimes on the street, I'm like, you look like you just walked out of the Natural History Museum. <laughs> In, in your thing. mob wife voice. <laughs> in your mob wife voice, yeah. So it's really, really devastating. And it is. so it really is. let's kind of get into how the fur industry works and this mob wife trend. I, I have a feeling that the fur industry is what is behind this. They are mm -hmm. trying to bring fur back. Probably. It's, it's another example of putting profits over ethics. Right. Because fur is, I mean, it is dead, right? But it was one of those industries that we started to see fading out. I mean. Right. I thought, I really thought fur was over. Mm-hmm. Me too. Truly. Yeah. I mean, one thing about fashion is it is cyclical and you see these designers that, you know, will sometimes try to put it in their, their right. line. And they recycle their yeah. ideas. Yeah. And the whatever. new thing is the new term that all the animal agriculture industries are using is sustainability climate friendly. Right. And you're seeing the fur industry do this as well. And I'm going to tell you about these these new terms that are coming right. out. Because how is that yes. legit? So the International Fur Federation, the IFF, are There's really- the International fur, fur? Yeah, Federation, yeah. They are really- That's tr insane. They're trying their best to get people to wear real fur again. And of course, because they want to make money, right? So there's these new terms that they're using that they're putting out. One is is called natural fur, right? Mm. So this is a term, that they call <laughs> natural it- Natural fur. They say that the, the, the pillars of fur, that it employs people, that it's sustainable. And um, what they're trying to do is they're using a term called fur cycle that they're putting on materials, which allows people to scan the material, the fur, and to actually track uh, the where it came from. So let's say it's a vintage piece of fur. You're able to track. Okay, it was produced in this country. This is, but it's BS. We know that it's actually very hard almost, to track these products. Almost impossible. Almost got goosebumps. I thought you were gonna say it, it tracks the animal, oh. <laughs> the animal's lives beforehand. So he's like, this is where you got your coat like free range and they're like, this oh. is where you got your eggs. Maybe that's what's next for them. No, I, mean. I hope it's over. I mm. want it to die. I can't believe that there's a federation that's how big it is. Mm -hmm. And so these are Twisted. these are the certifications that they're trying to put in that. So there's, you know how in the industries with like grass fed and organic right. and whatnot. So in, in the fur industry, they have something called the fur mark certification. And this covers- Oh no, I know what you're gonna say. What am I gonna say? Is it like with the scars? Like when, oh no, it's fur doesn't have scars. Or like the pattern? Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Okay, the fur mark certification, it covers mink, foxes, fox, and, and, and raccoons. And so there's four pillars that the fur mark certification tries to do. One right. is they try to say, as long as there's good housing, good feeding, good health, and um, appropriate behavior, like as long as they're not running around in the cages, that they can get this certification, which basically says what we're doing is okay and we should be able to kill them and turn them into fur coats. Oh my God, I hate us. And the, I hate us. You humans are 
freaking twisted. And the pillars for the certification, let's just kind of go through it. Good housing. Which is what? I'm like, these animals are in wire cages. Right. What are you doing? You're setting them up in like the Taj Mahal? What are right. you doing? Exactly. Uh, no, they're in cages stacked on top of each other. No blankets, no pillows. Yeah. It's like, okay, no let's, privacy. Just, let's just let the fur industry determine what good housing means, right? right. It's again, an industry policing itself. It's it makes a lie. no sense. It's just to make people feel better. Right, so they say good feeding so that the animals can't have prolonged hunger or thirst. Or... Yeah, they just overfeed them, right? Don't they just stuff them? with bad fucking food yeah. that they probably wouldn't have been eating in their natural habitat? Absolutely not. In their natural habitat, they would be running wild and free and, and running many, many miles every single day. They wouldn't be in a cage doing circles. I mean, Sad. also, a lot of these animals are social animals. So imagine being, you know, kept in one of those cages. There's a great film called Slay, mm, where Slay. they did an investigation into a Chinese fur farm and you just see these beautiful mm. foxes in these tiny cages, just like looking out and then so circling sad. around. The only time they come out of their cage is when they're about to be killed. Died. Yeah. And uh, it's just so devastating to see this. And I had a really cool experience actually up close with a fox mm -hmm. at Positive Beginnings. <gasps> Reef is one of the foxes at um, Positive Beginnings. And when I went into the enclosure, I actually got a chance to pet him Aww. and you know, fur is is so beautiful on the animals. Yeah. And, and, and there's a quote, it says, fur is very beautiful on the animals that wear it and very ugly on, on people, or worn by very ugly people. Right, well, they don't wear it, it's just their skin. It's like if they took my skin, they're like, Justina's skin is really great when she wears it, um, but even better on you, this no. counted 10% off. It's like, oh. that's pretty fucking weird. Let's not do that. I know this is not the second time we talked about using my skin, but I know. you do have nice skin, so stop I can saying see why. that. I know. I'm just kidding. We can't turn you into a fur coat. You're not Please hairy don't. enough. Please <laughs> don't. Yeah, that's yeah. Thank God. You're not hairy enough. I just started getting laser. Thank God. It's on my okay. Legs. It's like the it's like the like leather, right? Yeah. It wouldn't could, be fur. It would be like leather. We could turn you into leather, and we could maybe make some type of jacket out of my leg hair. Or Listen, something. we can do a lot of things, but that doesn't mean that we should. That's the whole point. Thank you, that's a great point. So we're looking at these industries now using all these terms that are trying to make themselves sustainable. And again, it is the fur industry trying to push a product that has sort of made its way out because it's been socially unacceptable for so long. Right. And I think, you know, one point that I want to make about when people that wear fur, it's to set this status. <laughs> one point that I want to make Ugh, is that. Makes me like, <laughs> disgusted on the inside. <laughs> they walk around because they want to show people that they think they're better than everybody else. But you, we have to question, it's like why else would a billion dollar industry want people to buy used products unless it, it profited somehow from it? Mm -hmm. So what they're trying to do is get this trend back into public space and right. and and basically send a signal of, well, vintage this, vintage that. And it's like, well, we first of all don't know if it's vintage or not. And second right. of all, vintage fur is not okay because you're still promoting violence towards animals. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the history of the mob life trend. Okay. So going back just with fur in general, we know people have been killing animals for their fur, for their skins for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. It was survival at one point. Right. And over the years, exotic furs and, and skins were a symbol of status. Right. That's, it's, it's horrible. And, and a lot of you know, kings and, and people with power would hunt. And it's just. <sighs> I don't know why people, people in general, in certain mindsets, think that when you hurt, harm, instill fear, that's a power status, so that's where it all comes from. Mm -hmm. It you makes know. you a weak, insecure dweeb, if right. you ask me. Yeah, like, first of all, you're you're scary, and also like Second you of got all, problems. Yeah, <laughs> third of, in the corner. We need to lock your ass up. Third of all, you're a fur dork. So, <laughs> the cinema is what really gave the mob wife mm. its name. We can go back into uh, The Godfather. Everybody knows right. The Godfather. I mean, it's a classic movie. And Connie, she was a mob wife. And mm. she was a character that 
showed status and wealth and power and beauty. And you got, you know, Scarface was another- Scarface. Scarface was yes. another movie. So Elvira Hancock, she's yeah. another mob wife. And then of course, The Sopranos, who doesn't love and, and, and adore Carmela Soprano, Edie Falco, mm -hmm. who's by the way, she's vegan. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't actually wear real fur. But, but right. what the cinema did was it portrayed these women as powerful, wealthy, sophisticated. They, mm -hmm. they portrayed this life as glamorous and luxurious when right. really, I mean, mob wives were, it's not exactly what it seemed. Right. So a lot of these <laughs> women, no, they, their husbands were out doing crime and they just kind of like would try to ignore and just say, well, my husband's out doing business. I don't know what else to tell you. And Actress they were like, I Jamie don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was my portrayal of my wife. Um, it's good. I hope I did it justice. <laughs> but these wives, a lot of the time, were mistreated. Yeah. There was a lot of misogyny involved. And I don't know if this is something we should be glamorizing. No, it kind of like goes back to the fur industry. It, it, it's violence. Yeah. Again. Violence, yeah. wearing violence, you know? Mm -hmm. Having violence, wearing violence. Is this your new catchphrase? <gasps> violence, violence, violence. We want none of that. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to see it. We don't want you to wear it. Yeah, and you're not a mob wife. Your name is Sally <laughs> Joe, and you live in you Bushwick. You keep saying Sally Joe. It's just what comes to mind. <laughs> It's true. I'm like, yeah. you You know, listen, wear what you want to wear, but leave animals out of it. There's right. great brands that, that are vegan and cruelty free and, and that will give you that same look. And honestly, I think that the industry has improved over the years. You they know, are. some people will say, oh, well, if it gets wet, it then gets ruined. It doesn't look the same. And trust me, there's a lot of great brands mm -hmm. that you cannot tell the difference. And honestly, that's what scares me about wearing a, a vegan uh, fur coat. Why? Because I'm afraid that it's gonna send the message that it's real yeah. and that it's okay. But then I guess you could say the same thing about like pleather shoes, like right. they look the same. But fur is different. I feel like fur, is it? In the sense of like uh, the statement that's out there. I think people understand that there are a lot more pleather alternatives okay. than there than there are fur alternatives, especially if it's like a really nice faux coat. Personally, I don't like the trend. I don't think it's sexy. I don't think it's cool. Um, you just like look like a, not, not, not saying anything mean, but you just look like a, a big hairball. <laughs> you look like you walked out of the Natural History Museum. But yeah, I mean, I agree. I and wouldn't wear. I think, you know, it, it is a beautiful thing that we can offer those alternatives for those that want to wear it. But I almost feel like, yeah, if I wear a faux fur coat that I would have to put some sort of pin on the jacket to be like, That's kind of cool. This is not fur. Yeah. Yeah. That could be kind of cool. Yeah. So in the next segment, we are going to talk to Ashley Froner. She is the social media director at PETA. Yay. She does amazing work. And she's going to talk about how PETA has been fighting, you know, against the fur industry for, for many, many years. And also how social media celebrities influence these industries and what we could do about it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Ashley, why don't you just introduce yourself? Who are you and what do you do at PETA? Yes, my name is Ashley Frano and I've been at PETA for almost 10 years now. Wow. Almost a decade. I love um, that. <laughs> and I'm the director of social media, so I'm overseeing our incredible team. We were actually named the best social team a couple years ago. Um, we work on influencer projects. We obviously post all of the content that you guys see on TikTok that you know isn't supporting the mob by Jen. Mm -hmm. um, everything on Instagram, everything on Facebook and X as well. Um, and we also have a great yes. army of people replying to folks in the comments. So all of the people who are saying things that the fur industry is parroting, you know, they're coming right back and saying, no, that's not true. And also right. this is so violent. Um, so yeah, we have a, we have a really awesome team. So can you just talk a little bit about what the scale and the scope of the issue is with fur so that people understand the importance of posting about it and sharing on social media. Absolutely. And first, I want to say that we are winning this issue, especially in this country. We've seen so many brands ban fur from Chanel and Gucci. Um, Nordstrom is no longer selling it. Saks Fifth Avenue is no longer selling it. So we've really done a lot in, in this country in particular. And 
A lot of people still do know that it's wrong, though, of course, we are seeing this trend like you've been talking about today, bring it back. Um, but, you know, in other countries, particularly in China, where a lot of fur is produced and also in Europe, where a lot of fur is produced, there are just so many millions of animals sitting in cages right now suffering. And that is why we're here today to talk about this, because we have minks, we have foxes, we have also coyotes are often used for their fur. We thankfully just got Canada Goose recently to stop using it. Um, anybody who's seen those black jackets with the fur trim, that is a coyote. Yeah. Those are animals who were once running around. Um, I always think about my dog. I have yes. like such a great relationship with her. She's like my everything. And she's so complex. Um, she's really funny. She's really protective. <laughs> she's really sassy. Um, and we just go through a lot together. And, you know, I have coyotes in my neighborhood and she's like a German Shepherd Australian cattle dog mix. Aww. And she looks just like them. Aww. When I see them running, I'm like, oh, there's an off leash dog. Like I need to make sure that she's okay. But no, that's a coyote. And they're, they're just like like her like yeah. she was a mom they are moms mm -hmm. um their fathers their sons their daughters and they have the same personalities as the animals that we know um exactly they came from them exactly the cognitive dissonance the spectrum i see people wearing these fur trims of coyotes walking down the street with their right. dogs and i'm like you're walking a canine and you're wearing a canine yeah, ding -dong. make it make sense i know people just i, I feel like i want to give them credit and say yeah. that they don't know right they don't know even though it doesn't matter what animal it could be it shouldn't matter it's cruel but i feel like a lot of people forget that dogs come from coyotes like they they, they were bred to be domestic domesticated and it's like does that help you guys a little bit? You know, like I, I want people to remember that it's coyotes because they don't know that. They don't. And I think people, we're so busy. You know, we right. don't have time to look into everything that we're doing all the time, every day, what we're buying. We're being advertised to. We see right. people wearing these trends and then we're like, that is cool. You know, I want to be liked. I want to be cool. Right. I want to do that same thing. And so they're just going ahead mm -hmm. without really thinking about the impact, the supply chain, everything that had to happen. Right. You know, there were animals who were literally skinned alive for this. Wow. Bunnies. People love bunnies. You know, they're like seeing them hopping in the field and then like thinking it's OK to wear them. And it's it's just because of the cognitive dis dissonance. And that's what this podcast is about, is unearthing these industries and what's going on. So I'm excited to talk about it. Also, the lies behind the labels that they're putting on all these products, and right. you know, I think the the, the question is that is is there a right way to do this? The short answer is no. <laughs> right, right. Um, the industry has come up with, like you were saying, they're policing themselves. They they've come up with their own like labels of things being more humane, and it's just humane washing and greenwashing. These are just lies to make people feel better, and sadly. I understand why it's working for some people because yeah. they do want to feel like they're making an ethical choice or a better right. choice or like, oh, this one is like from a good place. Yeah, this one died already. Yeah. <sighs> I know. Like the question Where, is, when, how? Would you wear a dog that was on the racks in that vintage store? Exactly. And that's the speciesism that we right. have so deeply rooted in our society that we see these animals as others. Right. Think about times where we've said, oh, well, based on the way that somebody looks, we see them as others so right. we can oppress them. And we're kind of doing the same thing with species where yeah. we say, oh, well, just because it's a different type of canine, we're going to wear them right. and we're going to cuddle with another one. It's so insane. it's this deeply rooted really species is. mindset. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly what you were saying, like, I'm pretty sure people would not wear vintage tigers, mm -hmm. not vintage kittens. They probably would not wear their Definitely dog who passed too. away, norm, you know, of natural causes and make that into a fur coat. Like right. these people, <laughs> and I understand too, that people are very concerned about the environmental aspect of faux fur and right. yada yada. And that's a lot of the comments that we see Right. in our uh, TikTok and Instagram section. Hit him with the facts, Ashley. <laughs> yeah, that's an easy, that's an easy way to fight us. Like, oh, this is not sustainable. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to say like, everybody who's really concerned about fur biodegrading, let it do that. <laughs> do not wear it, just let it die. Right. Also, you could donate it to animal shelters. You could donate it to wildlife rehabilitators. Um, PETA also, we take fur coats and we give them to humans in need, um, often overseas and refugees. But actually, from the cradle to the grave, so like the raising of a mink, 
what they would need to do to live obviously in a very small cage um and then all of the chemicals that need to be treated on the fur it's up to 10 times more than like a hemp faux coat right. faux fur coat mm -hmm. even the worst of the vegan pleathers or vegan furs are not as bad as the Absolutely animal not. fur Right. in exactly. terms of environmental impact it just sure. makes sense it's like okay if this was so natural it would be rotting and stinky exactly. and like falling apart in some places because it is from an animal's body like how can you not for two seconds think that this was not chemically treated yeah so stop exactly. saying that you think it's more environmentally friendly so what about the pandemic risk yeah, so, you know, people going into fur farms. <laughs> it's a de risk, we definitely don't want another one of those, please, please. Um, but people going into fur farms, that's where zoonotic diseases are, bre are breeding, mm -hmm. um, particularly in mink. Mink were actually getting a lot of, co of COVID-19, and they had to be, like, gassed in mass, which is, they're going to be killed either way. It's all very sad. But, like, seeing that happen is almost worse in a way to me yeah. because I'm just like, oh, so you were raised to suffer for like literally no reason um and so well, also they kill them because they got covid so they just gas them to death because they were no longer usable well we couldn't the humans like couldn't interact with them anymore oh. so it was like a safety thing um but all of these pandemics they come from animals and like right. our relation with them and we're doing it in in unnatural ways and in very dirty and filthy conditions and so that's what happens when we do that. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I guess, why don't you talk us through over the years how PETA is trying to shift the narrative and create change and and, and give information to the public about the fur industry specifically? Because there's so many issues to focus on. It's like, right. how do we know so where right. to direct our attention? Right. I know. And PETA does a great job of directing our attention to many places. I'm, I'm so surprised by all of our people all the time. We have like amazing experts in so many fields it's it's so wonderful um when i started i was like actually surprised by all the things we do i was mm -hmm. i didn't know about our corporate relations team mm -hmm. so they're working like with the industry to help move move them along um so we have done a lot of investigations which is our investigations team and then we we mail we mail or in the past we literally were mailing tapes um and now we're emailing you know we've caught up with the times <laughs> I um, like a downloadable link exactly the, the hieroglyphic that's just gonna pop up right? i know i mean that would be great because sometimes they're like we can't watch it but okay we'll drop it we'll stop right. selling it no it's like sit down and watch it you're the right. reason that this is happening and i always tell people if you are to wear fur or eat meat or participate in any other industry that uses animals by attending circuses, aquariums, whatever it is, watch the freaking footage and, and learn about what you are supporting. 100%. Continue, mm -hmm. sorry. No, it's, it's okay. It's no, it's Doing research is, is really important and we just don't do it enough. Everybody right. really needs to do that for every decision that they make. I, I really love that you said, so you guys are actually on the ground doing the undercover investigations and going into these places and then sending the industry footage. So you kind of start off with a very educational right. kind approach yeah. first. You're like, here's the information. We are educating you. We are giving you the opportunity to change. And what happens when they don't change? When they don't change, um, we say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna start our people after you. <laughs> You're like, all right, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to change. Rally the troops, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and that's literally how we do it um like people will get people tens of thousands know. of emails in a day people then you know the corporate folks they're like oh wait people actually don't want to buy this they do think it's wrong so right they're like, right yeah. we'll stop selling it we don't want this bad publicity we don't want people boycotting our brand right. um and yeah people will get literally tens of thousands of emails from our supporters we have amazing supporters um Spam. and from there hopefully they ban it i mean again it's been a long journey where we're we are where we are now because of all of our amazing supporters. And we, like I said, Canada Goose was a recent win. That was something that we were really going after. Mm -hmm. um, and again, just to talk about the different aspects of PETA, we did a lot of protests for that one yeah. <laughs> in person. We did a lot of really interesting things in New York City too, just because it's such a big brand there. We had like people yeah. holding dead coyote props in the subway. Mm -hmm. um, we had people with coyote masks standing outside, just really trying to raise awareness like that is not just a coat. Yeah. That's like we were saying, that's a canine. I remember yeah. you guys had a man dressed up in body paint as a skinned yes. coyote. And yes. he was wearing underwear, I think. <laughs> yes, he did have tell. underwear, but he could have been a coyote if you were looking from far away. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I was like, 
how did they get that? You were literally like, naked? I you were like, like, I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is he? I mean, he does a really good job at like hiring pretty attractive people too. Whoa. So you're really drawn. Oh, Jimmy's like, Who's vegans that are attractive. Hot guy? Yeah, yeah, you're like, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But he was cool. I remember him very well. Ashley Byrne was actually in charge of doing that. That was one of my first actual fur, anti-fur protests. Oh, I love so, that. Yeah, you guys have created a little monster. <laughs> Look at you now. <laughs> Look at you. So what are some of the other recent campaigns? I know you had something going on with Urban Outfitters. Yeah, so we're going over after them right now for other materials. They actually don't sell fur, which is wonderful, but that's not enough. We still have leather. We still have down. We still have wool. We still have cashmere. (laughs) Um, I don't believe that they sell mohair, but that's something that we're still talking about with other brands. Yes. Like like moles? No. Oh, God. (laughs) I mean, still, it's still awful, but it's mohair. It's a, they're a goat. They're really sweet and they no. like scream. Yeah, goats don't scream. fuck around. They're like, get away from me! <laughs> <laughs> so really They're great. Like, get off of me. Yeah, That's so like sad. If you were a goat, you would be like that. Too. I am a goat. Yeah. I was born the year of the goat. I'm a golden goat. So yeah. I have Greatest to speak up for the gold. Yeah, it's like yeah. you bump her shoulder. She's like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm not like that. No. I'm not like, get off of me. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> wait, okay. wait, what's the texture of their hair? Is it wiry? Um, that it's really pretty oh, no, when you it's see the them on the animal. It's fluffy. I think the, I, I've met a there, couple there's different There's also goats. like the cashmere goat, which is mm-hmm. that's an Angora goat. So they're like kind of different, but they look similar. What do you predict with this mob wife trend? Do you think it's going to be something that is going on for months? Is this for years? Is this something where it's really going to bring fur back? Has it already? What do you think? Yeah, so luckily we're heading into summer, so that's a good thing yeah. for fur. At least a pause. <laughs> yes, yes, at least a pause. Um, but I will say that I think that this little blip of like what some are calling a resurgence, I think it's also waking us up to be like, okay, we need to keep going for fur. Like right. we have a lot of work to do still on that issue and also mm-hmm. worldwide too. But in the U.S. particularly, like a lot of the younger people, they don't remember or they may not have been alive in the 80s and 90s, even the early 2000s when fur was you know, more of a thing and we were always going after it and really showing the violence. Um, so we've been on the social team like posting so much about the Bob Wife aesthetic and just showing all of the fur footage that we have from the past few decades. And people are really resonating with it. Um, unfortunately, platforms like TikTok do not let us post the yeah. truth. Um, they will just take it down and we've gotten our account shut down (laughs) at times um for for content so we have to be really like you were saying creative and like how can we show people that this is still really violent and still really sad and still you know involves beautiful animals without showing kind of like the blood and the electrocution um and the skinning so there's God forbid ways, we show the freaking truth. I know. Yeah, they only I know. want to show the final product, and it's like that final product is a is lie, a lie, and it's filled yeah. with all of that—the right. blood, the tears, the screams. Exactly, it's and our trends so are moving sad. at like a rapid pace rapid right now, like so quickly. Speed. Like by the time this comes out, hopefully the channel will be done. Right? <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So I think you know when it comes to vintage, we are fully in support of buying secondhand items that yeah. do not come from animals. There right. are plenty of other materials that you can use because at the end of the day, it's still representing that violence. Absolutely. So yeah. how can people get involved and help? And you know, if they're in different parts of the country or in other countries, can they contact PETA to participate in these demos? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, join our action team. We have them all over the U.S. Um, you can get emails whenever we're doing a local protest in your area. So that's super exciting. I think another thing to do, too, is like when you see your favorite celebrity or influencer wearing fur, you have to say something. Right. If you don't feel comfortable leaving a comment that's public, then send them a DM because they are the ones who are like driving this trend. And we need to make them feel that this is not a good trend to drive and your right. fans will be upset with you. Right. Um, so, you know, please speak out. And if brands are banning fur, applaud them too because that's really exciting and we want to make sure that they feel that we want those brands to keep banning fur and not bring it back. That's a good piece of advice. Yeah, and what you could say too is to certain celebrities, let's say you see a celebrity on the street, if you, they do something that's good for animals, I always like to say thank you for defending animals. Right. It actually stops them in their tracks and they're like, 
wait, what? And then mm-hmm. you're like, thank you for not wearing fur or thank yeah. you for defending animals. Right. And it, yeah. it sticks in their mind. It makes a big difference. And I do just want to tell a short little story of uh, my, my good friend, Rob Banks. If you guys don't follow him on Instagram, you absolutely should. He's been fighting the fur industry for years. He used to live in New York and him and I would go out and we would sticker together and we just want to create, you know, the social shift. And so we have these stickers that say, I'm an asshole. I wear fur. <laughs> and we would take like trails of toilet paper and stick it to the sticker and then stick it on fur hags. And they would just oh walk around God. in these jackets. Oh, and it's not violent. It's, it's peaceful. Right. It's just, it's funny. Actually, it's, it's using yes, humor. It's, it's, it's not hurting anybody, but right. what it does is it's sending that message to the exactly. public that this is not acceptable. Right. And so him and I and other activists have done a few celebrity disruptions. Mm -hmm. where we will figure out if there's a book signing Mm -hmm. or we will figure out if there's like some type of yoga class or talk that one of these celebrities is hosting. Mm -hmm. So we did a few of them. He's done way more than I have. He's been a huge inspiration to me and and actually helped me get involved in this. And the first one that I did was uh, against Kate Upton. Mm -hmm. And she was promoting Canada Goose at the time and talking about how it's sustainable and and, and and she's part of the Arctic world. or Saving polar bears. Saving polar bears. That's what it was and so we found out where she was hosting this like yoga class and you know all the girls look like me they're like blonde yogi type of people basic white bitch and so <laughs> i fit right in so you were like perfect. i was like perfect let me just put on my yoga attire and channel my inner cruella de yeah. <laughs> so i roll out the mat rob is like hiding in the back of the room he's got face tattoos. I'm like, you stay over there. So I'm like rolled out on the mat and I had my poster folded up in like a little bag. So we're doing this yoga class and then out of nowhere, we bust out into action. And Rob is like, shame on you for promoting an industry that abuses animals, you monster. And this made TMZ headlines and he was doing his speech and we were shouting fur trade, death trade, fur trade, death trade. And then I just looked at her and I was like, how dare you? (laughs) It was new. I was new. I didn't know what to say. I was like, I don't know what to do. Now I would really give her a piece of my mind. But that was a perfect way to reach her and also reach the media with this mm-hmm. message. Right. Again, peaceful, nonviolent, but still very important to start spreading awareness. And we did a few of those. We did one against Jessica Simpson. And mm-hmm. the next day after we disrupted Jessica Simpson's book signing at Barnes & Noble in Union Square, I had a black wig on, like I was unrecognizable, held the sign up. It was like a skinned animal on the sign. And I got that on the cover of the Daily Mail and many other outlets and TMZ. And Jessica Simpson the next day posted her in a coat that looked like fur and she wrote hashtag faux fur. Oh, that's good. So uh, what are some alternatives uh, to fur and uh, just any advice for people that are looking to maybe if they want to do the mob wife aesthetic, how can they do it without hurting animals? Yeah. So you can definitely look at thrift shops and on Depop and all these places that sell vintage real fur as well and just find the faux option. There's tons of faux fur in there. It's not all real. Um, Just leave the real on the shack. Let it again, biodegrade. If it's so biodegradable, just let it die there. Um, There's also hemp fur, hemp fur. There's a lot of really great brands like Apri. um, I believe noise has faux fur. There's a lot of uh, unreal fur. There's a lot of great brands that make like really stunning quotes. Um, I personally also just advocate for like not wearing any fur. To me, it's just like a weird look on me I don't know no, same. Um, I do like it on others but you don't have to wear faux fur or real fur there's right. a lot of faux fur haters out there right. just, just don't wear it's trendy <laughs> just because it's trendy does not mean you have to do it exactly exactly mm-hmm. there's plenty of other cute things you can wear there's obviously we can get into the leather leathers as well we have apple leather cactus leather all the types of vegan yeah, leathers pineapple, yeah mango. Mm. the whole produce section can be made into leather we found mm. grape mm. Um, so you know Grab those as well. It's it's a lot more exciting to talk about too. Instead right. of saying I'm wearing a dead cow, it's you're like I'm wearing. But nobody grapes. wants to say they're wearing a dead cow. But it is really fun to say, hey, this is apple leather, mm-hmm. corn leather. Right. They're like, what? That's corn leather. You're like, yeah, it's corn leather. Yeah, it's like my <laughs> shoes are made out of pineapples, actually. 
You want to lick them? Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, well, you could eat them now. <laughs> and what's good, so great about them is like they are durable too. And what they do actually, these next gen vegan leather materials, they make it so that it has a life cycle so mm-hmm. that, you know, it will last a hundred years and then break down after that. And so we look at leathers that are made from animals and those actually don't break down so easily. And you look at the environment and all these different issues. So we really need to take to, to, to social media because we've seen mm-hmm. the power that social media and influencers have in yeah. creating really violent situations for animals. Yeah. Yeah. And so we are at war. We are fighting against that. Was there anything that you wanted to add about the mob wife trend, about how more pe- more people could help and get involved? Um, I would say just, you know, share, 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 share your information in person, share content on your stories, share with your friends and just say like, this is what this trend actually is. Um, and just find ways to get involved. It can be so simple as talking with your family members, just as a personal story. My mom inherited a mink coat. And when I was younger, I thought it was kind of cool, you know, just being, these mob wife people (laughs) um and when i got older i was like mom these are these are minks um and it took her five years of me saying those things to her to her for her to finally donate it um donate it back to the animals i don't know where she took it to be honest she was like i'm sick of your shit i'm sick 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 of your shit throwing it in the garbage (laughs) (laughs) but finding you know anything you can do i also wear like stop wearing animals uh shirts like that are embroidered with that in the back whenever i go to places that might have a lot of fur like Mm -hmm. um back in pittsburgh there's like this center where there's a lot of um theater and everybody's always wearing floor floor length fur coats so i'm just wearing that and also making comments when i can um but i would just say say anything that you're comfortable with in ways that you're good at speaking out i would do it it's like let's get creative here guys the other day i actually took a coat from PETA. it was a long white fur coat that was donated and we used it for an anti-fur demo and we did pour blood all over it and then what i was able to do through social media is actually cut in footage of the animals and it was a really powerful Mm -hmm. way just to kind of juxtapose this product this final product with where it came from and it helped to spread the message and a lot of people were saying oh my god why are they doing this to this this dog it it looked it's a raccoon dog it looked like a dog they're like i can't believe this and so it was a really really powerful way to get the message across and yes these are not products we should be wearing it's not fashion it is violence period yes so ashley thank you so so much for coming on you guys know where to find ashley you can follow PETA on all social platforms at PETA. at PETA. Yeah. T-A. See you there. See you in the comments <laughs> section. <laughs> She's ready. Guns are out. I'm at It's Jamie's Corner. I'm at Justina.Justina. And until next time, guys, we we'll will be back. Be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back.